Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining our Talk Story Hour with Ingenio, our new, new PBM partner. And myself, I just want to introduce you all if I haven't met, had a chance to meet you. My name is Han Bannister. I'm the pharmacy director with Aloha Care. And uh, we're waiting for Dr. Okamoto to sign on, but um, he'll, hopefully he'll sign on in a bit. And on today's call, um, Ingenia will share with you a little history about how they came um, about and their background. Then we'll go into the new formula search tool, their P EPA process, and new clinical offerings. Um, we hope that this session is informative and that if you have any questions, please use the Q&A um, box below. And with that, I'll refer over to Ingenio uh, to introduce himself. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Bobby Henderson here. Um, I'm the staff VP for Medicaid operations, uh, supporting Aloha Care. And I'd like to introduce my boss, uh, Scott Helmus. Hi everyone, Scott Helmus, and I am the Chief Operating Officer for Ingenio. Happy to be here and look forward to our conversation today. Uh, why don't we go to Lisa next? Good afternoon, everyone. Lisa Morris. I'm the Vice President and oversee our clinical and specialty pharmacy strategy for Ingenio Rx. I will turn it to Kit. Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Kit Leung. I am at the uh, pharmacy. Network Director on Aloha Care, and I'm, I, I'm on a team that oversees the, uh, the pharmacy contracting, enrollment, and pharmacy services uh, on behalf of Aloha Care. Over to Taylor. Hi, everyone. My name is Taylor Lazarowitz. Um, I work um, um, at Ingenio, and I represent the ZipDrug brand, so I oversee all of the uh, ZipDrug tools and all of the clients, um, and that's for Aloha Care as well. I'm going to hand it to Amy. Sorry, can't get myself off mute. Hi, uh, Amy Brown, and I handle uh, EPA oversight for Ingenio. Um, and we also have our um, EPA partners um, cover my meds on the line as well. Um, Hannah, I think you're on. Hi, Amy. Yeah, Andrea and myself are here from Cover My Meds. Um, I'm not sure. I know Andrea said she's on, but I don't see her name in the attendee list. So I'm not sure if she's able to speak. I it, can you hear me? Because I did yes, unmute. We can hear oh, you. Yay. Okay. All right. Great. Hello, everybody. I'm Andrea. Thanks, Andrea. Of course. Thanks, guys. So, uh, just kind of moving along here, um, we really appreciate the opportunity that uh, Han and Francois extended to us to come and speak with you this afternoon. Uh, we're looking forward to building a really strong relationship and partnership uh, with you as the providers for our Aloha Care members. And I'm going to turn it over uh, to Scott, who can uh, just give us a little bit of background on, on where we came from. So Scott? Hi, everyone. Yes, thank you, Bobby. So, uh, you know, Ingenio is uh, a subsidiary of Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield. Uh, we're very proud to be part of the Blue story. And uh, we're, we're sort of a, a, a new company, but not a new company. Um, actually, Anthem has been in the pharmacy business for well over 30 years. Uh, but they decided uh, a couple of years ago that um, the pharmacy business is so important to the company's success and it's so important to our clients and members that we decided to uh, establish a separate brand called Ingenio RX uh, to be our pharmacy benefit manager. Uh, so Bobby and I and many of the team members on the phone today are part of Ingenio and we are very pleased to provide service to our uh, colleagues at Aloha Care and their members and providers. So uh, Bobby, I'll pick it up. Well, actually, I'll turn it back over to you to pick it up from here. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Scott. Uh, so, you know, um, as Scott mentioned, we've been doing this a long time um, as an organization and coming from an MCO, we, we realize the importance of what it means to focus on the member. So it's a lot of things that we've done as Ingenio RX is a commitment to making sure that the member and the provider experience is one of excellence. 
So the first thing that we did is we looked at our call center um, opportunity and we extended 24 seven member uh, support, including the ability to have access uh, to clinical experts, pharmacy experts, especially within our specialty area. And we wanted to make sure that we're meeting the members where they are. So looking at the convenience of being able to do doorstop delivery and including easy pill packets, things that will support the member, especially our, our high need members, uh, to make their um, experience with pharmacy easy one. We know, right, that the pharmacy benefit is the first benefit that our members use. So it's so important that we execute properly and we're providing them the support that they need. And I wanted to make sure that we included what I love to call the donut side um, that's on the screen here. It kind of shows our relationship with CVS. Um, we use CVS really as our fulfillment center. You see at the bottom of the donut, it really speaks to the network, um, you know, the physical assets that CVS has to offer. And the top part of the donut really speaks to the program itself and the expertise that we bring to the table. And I'm excited that we have um, my colleagues here today uh, to talk through a lot of the programs that we have and the processes or prior authorization process. We control the formulary management. We support Aloha Care in their decisions to make sure that the formulary is meeting the needs of the Aloha Care members. The clinical strategy adherence is so important. And Lisa Morris will be able to talk through our clinical programs and what we're bringing um, and partnering with Aloha Care. So, and of course, we've got uh, Zip Drug and we've got Kit to talk about our network programs. So I'm going to pass it on to Lisa Morris. Who is going to walk us through our formulary search tool. Thanks, Bobby. And again, good afternoon, everyone. So as Bobby mentioned, um, we have built the formulary for Aloha Care in partnership with Han and her team uh, based on a foundation of the experience that Scott and Bobby talked about and our experience as an MC being born out of an MCO and the need and the design of what those formularies need to look like. And then working directly with Han and the team on what's specific for Hawaii, what is the coverage that's needed, um, what are the benefit designs that might be slightly different, how does OTC work or pharmacy versus medical. And so we spent a lot of time working up to our go live, building that formulary to be meaningful and accessible. Um, as, but also in, in a way to help manage overall spend and trend for the Aloha Care uh, members. So what I wanted to spend a few minutes on today is just getting you oriented to the search tool that we do have available for you on the Aloha Care uh, site. Uh, just to teach you kind of how and what information's out there, because there is a lot of information out there that can guide what, for, what drugs are on the formulary, what needs a prior authorization, and then you can link right into Cover My Meds, which we'll get to later. So I'm going to steal the screen from Bobby, and I am going to pull up my uh, formulary search tool. So if somebody can just let me know when you can see this. Can you guys see? Yep. We can see it. Okay. Thank you. okay, wonderful. So I am one click in, I will tell you, into the Aloha Care uh, website. So you're going to go to alohacare.org forward slash formulary, and you will find a link to the Quest formulary. Once you click on that, you will see a screen that looks like this. Um, if you wanted to create a printable formulary, you could do that from this link. But really what I like about this tool is that it's interactive for you. And if you keep clicking in, you'll get more and more information. So I'm going to use the drug Avonex today for the search because it has a lot of different pieces. It's a specialty drug. It, um, it has, uh, it's on formulary. There's, there's different edits and things on it. So um, just for purposes of, of demonstration, you're going to type in the drug and click the search tool. Once you do that, you're going to see um, the, the, the drugs that you've typed in. If there's multiple strengths, you'll see those come up. Right here on the left-hand side, hopefully you can see my screen here, there's an F. That means that it's a formulary drug. If it was non-formulary, you would see an NF. Um, you can click on one of the drugs 
and again, you have to just kind of keep scrolling down because there's lots of information here. It will bring up Avonex specifically. And let me just close my pictures for a second, all the faces, um, mm -hmm. so that I can see the whole screen. <laughs> so essentially what you'll have here is the, the, the brand name of the drug that you clicked in. If it's a generic, it'll tell you that over here. The next thing that you're gonna see is more information about therapeutic class. There's actually two links here. So one is not in italics, and then there is a second one that's in italics. Hopefully you can see that. If you wanna see all the drugs in the multiple sclerosis interferon category, so if you wanna know, or if you've picked a non-formulary drug and you're like, what is formulary? You can click on that link. Again, you gotta scroll down, but then you can see all of the drugs uh, that are in that category. And so you can see here again, Avonex is formulary, Plegrity is non-formulary. So if you had typed in Plegrity, you found it to be non-formulary, you could use that link and then get to what are the formulary products. So in addition, so I just went back one because I want to get us back to this main screen. The other side of the screen gives you lots of other information and there's lots of different um, little indicators. If you forget what any of the indicators mean or if they don't make logical sense to you, right below this drug, there are all kinds of definitions. So the first set is related to whether it's uh, formulary or non-formulary. There's an indicator for benefit exclusion and state carve out. There are also, and I won't, I promise not to read all of these, there are also all kinds of other indicators that you might see, uh, whether it's a 90 day supply or whether there's clinical criteria. We'll talk about that in a minute. I do want to draw your attention to one um, indicator that, that may not be uh, self-explanatory, but there is a um, yellow, looks like a piece of paper with writing that will show up in that box. If we wanna give you all some prescriber notes, um, this is great for a drug like um, Subutex, where we'll tell you as a reminder, we're trying to reserve that drug for pregnant women and you know, here are the other preferred products in that space. Um, so when we see things or get questions from prescribers and we're trying to create clarity, we will at times put prescriber notes in as well. And again, that would be just a hyperlink right here. It will be a little yellow sheet. You would click on it and it would give you information. So back to Avonex though. So if you look at Avonex, you can tell from uh, the information here, it has a quantity limit. Click on the little circle. It'll tell you what the quantity limit is. In this case, it's one kit for 20 days. You can close that. You can also find out it has a PA and we're gonna go into clinical criteria here in a moment. But then you can also see here that it's a specialty pharmacy drug. So in this case, they do need to go to the specialty pharmacy to get that medication. And then if you click on this clinical criteria, you'll get a box that comes up that's going to tell you um, that there is another link for the coverage details. Um, before I click on it, I do want to call out one other thing. So what we know is this drug has a prior authorization. It also has a quantity limit. Right here in the link, we give you links to cover my meds and sure scripts where you can go and start that request for a prior authorization. We're gonna go into that um, deeper, but I wanted to just show you that right here from the formulary tool, you can get to cover my meds or sure scripts and start that electronic prior auth. So before you do that, if you wanna know the criteria, just right here, with the big here in, in capital letters, if you click on that, Hopefully you'll see what comes up. Um, you'll see a sheet essentially that comes up and Bobby just confirmed you can see this that says interferons for multiple sclerosis. Yes. Perfect. Um, and so if you scroll down, this is really um, telling you the criteria that we use for the review of Avonex and the other drugs in the class. We'll give you the approval criteria for a preferred product um, and what, what the diagnosis is or what is needed. Um, and then also we'll give you the information for a non-formulary product. So in this case, we talked about Plegrity's non-formulary. You'll see the initial criteria is the same as the preferred products, but then you'll also see the additional information of the trial and failure of some of the preferred products before you can get that medication. So that's essentially as, as simple as it is um, to really manage the search tool. I'm gonna get back into it here. Um, because I can't see the top of my screen. Uh, there we go. And um, any information that you would need on any of the drugs will be found here. Um, any of the 
notes that we want to give you will be found over here on the right hand side. Um, so pretty easy and self explanatory to use. Um, pretty um, a lot of information in there as well that can really save you time and energy if you want to start here um, as you're working with your with your patients. So Bobby, I'm going to give the screen back to you if you want to go back to the slides. All righty. Perfect. And one last thing I'll say about that slide um, is that in addition on the Aloha Care uh, site, if there is a drug or clinical criteria that you want us to consider something different on, there is a link in there as well for you to send messages to us at IngenioRx. We read all of the requests from providers. We take all of that information to our PNT committee. Um, and so we do take that information to heart. I would encourage you to use it. Uh, we do get messages and we have changed information based on real life practice and things that are happening um, in, in different areas or and just in that, that maybe hadn't been in the evidence that we had at the time of making the decision. So there is a link to that right on the, on the website as well. And I would encourage you to use it um, if you have thoughts or questions about our criteria. So the other thing I wanna talk about is prior authorization a little bit more as a, as a double click. So I showed you in the formulary tool that you can um, click right in, you can find out what the criteria is, and then you can also go right to SureScripts or Cover My Meds to actually start your review. Um, why that's important is I, I wanna sh show you right now, Aloha Care has about a 57% adoption to electronic prior authorization. The um, reality is our EPA process has a much faster turnaround for all of you than our non-EPA. Non-EPA is you've called us, you've sent us a fax. And if you, are, if you submit something to us through an electronic prior authorization, we're able to typically turn that around within two to four hours. In some cases, if the information that you put in is allowed for an approval, you will get that as immediate real-time feedback. And then if it needs to go on for further review to a physician or a pharmacist, that turnaround is very quick. When we do phone calls and faxes, which we still have available, I, I don't want to message that that's not available, but there is a longer turnaround. There's more touches. Um, as you can imagine, just as, as it is for you, it's a more manual process for us. And the average turnaround for a non-electronic prior auth request is around nine hours. So think about it from an office visit day, you're talking about the next day before you're really going to get the decision. So. We try to encourage all of our physicians and our plan partners to encourage electronic prior auth as much as possible. It really will simplify the process um, for all of you. Um, and then the other thing I will say, internally, we are working with Han and the team on uh, reducing prior authorizations within the system themselves. So we have a, a program called Proactive Prior Auth where we'll take uh, medical claims files and look at are there diagnoses for certain drugs that are required on clinical that we can just um, automatically load into the pharmacy system. And therefore, when you actually go to need a prior authorization, it's already preloaded into the system because of the diagnosis information that we have from the health plan. So we want to partner with all of you. We want to simplify the process as much as possible. Um, I would encourage you to use EPA if you can. And the last plug I have, and then I'm going to turn it over to cover my meds, is if you are using an electronic medical record um, like uh, Epic, uh, there is a tool called Real-Time Benefit Check that you can use. Simply, um, it's a mock adjudication of the pharmacy benefit. So you can put in what you want to prescribe for, let's say myself, we put in Lisa Morris, uh, you're in my, my CIS part of the uh, electronic medical record for my chart. You go into the real time benefit check tool and you're able to do a mock adjudication. It will tell you if the drug requires a prior off, if there are alternatives, if there's quantity limits, if it needs to go to the specialty pharmacy. So it's another way to save time. It's something that you have within your EMR system. So work with your EMR um, vendor. If you're not seeing that as an option, real-time benefit check, and they can talk to you about how you can get access to that. But that's another way to help simplify the process. So with that, keeping on the theme with PA, I'm gonna turn it over to Amy and they're gonna walk through a Cover My Meds demo. How about while we're waiting, for her to come back, because I'm not sure. Um, I'm going to go over to the quality programs, the clinical programs, Lisa. Yeah, absolutely. 
Thank you. So as Bobby's bringing the slides back up, um, the other thing, you know, formulary and quantity limits and edits are very important as part of the overall management and access to the benefit. But, you know, Scott and Bobby started with, we were born out of the managed care organization, and we really believe at NGNERX on a focus on whole health. So it's not all about creating formularies and quantity limits and things like that. It's also about ensuring that our members and your patients have the best care possible and that they're taking their medications and they don't have duplicate therapy or polypharmacy and they're using their opioids correctly. So we've created really a suite of programs that we're launching um, in partnership with the Aloha Care team for our members and for you as the prescribers um, for different uh, categories. So we will have uh, refill reminders and messages about adherence to medications going to members. There will be some that are um, um, automatic voice response, so they'll be telephonic. There are others that are more uh, letter-based messages to, uh, to our members, reminding them to take their medications. There are digital messages and things like that as well in the future planned. But we want to encourage adherence as much as possible. And then there's some other really primary focuses. So for things like antidepressants, where it's so critical um, to have that education when you really start that medication, to know that you need to stay on it. It's not a miracle overnight type of pill. And so we'll send education at the very beginning of an antidepressant uh, new start treatment, encouraging the member to talk to you all as the physicians if they have any questions or they're not seeing success with their treatment. And then we're also going to encourage ongoing adherence with those medications. Um, we will also at times send messages to you all as prescribers around um, polypharmacy. If we notice within the claims uh, mining that we do with our analytics that a member has polypharmacy and there may be opportunities to reduce that, we will send messages to all of you at times and encourage you to, to look at those and suggestions. Again, they're just suggestions for you. Sometimes you may not have the whole picture we understand as, as members go to different places for their therapy. We want to work in partnership with you. Um, and the last one I'll call out is, is opioid and controlled substance monitoring. This one is one that we get a lot of positive feedback from our physicians on. We really um, monitor and kind of slice and dice the data in lots of different ways to look at potential overutilization of opioids, certainly recognizing that in some cases there are appropriate uses of opioids in cancer patients and hospice patients. And again, going back to that proactive prior auth, we're going to load some proactive authorizations for those members so that they can get larger quantities. But for that general population, we're looking for things like multiple opioid therapies or um, medication-assisted treatment and opioid therapy together, some of the different slices and dices that we can um, encourage and, and message to all of you that what may be going on. So we'll look for doctor shopping and let you know that. We'll look for pharmacy shopping and let you know that so that you have a tool at your disposal if that's something that is appropriate for you to message with the members. As we move forward into our Medicare launch um, in January of, of this year or of, of next year, 2022, we will also start doing comprehensive medication reviews, which are part of the Medicare STARS program with CMS. But we will be outreaching to members, talking with them about their medications, looking for opportunities with them as well. So again, we'll be interacting with you all um, through that as well as we identify opportunities or potential opportunities for savings or for um, polypharmacy or even adherence issues and things like that if we see them. So it's really about addressing gaps in care, improving adherence, managing waste out of the system where possible and um, working together um, on those things. So that'll be launching here soon. So you may hear messages from your members or um, you may get messages from NGNERX um, on, on Aloha Care's behalf. So with that, I will pause and Bobby, are we ready to go back to cover my meds? I believe so, Andrea. I believe so, yeah, let's see here. All right, so I am going, it's still not showing my screen, is it? Let's see, one more second. What you're looking at in the background is one of our fun conference rooms here. It's our medieval dungeon room, if you can see behind me. Now, can you see the Cover My Med screen? Or is it no. still not? Nope. No, this is okay. Um, 
I apologize. I had this all set up with our IT department, so I'm not sure my screen sharing isn't working with the uh, the meeting today. Um, Check to make sure you're sharing the correct screen. Yeah, I only have one open. Okay. Yeah. Um, all goodness. Right. Well, I well, apologize. Why don't you uh, take a step back and uh, double check that and we will circle back. So let's go to, or how does that look? Ah, uh, see them. That is sometimes it's just that we go. right screen. There you oh go. Oh my gosh. Thank you now, for, for being patient with me. Sure. Let's get right to the, uh, the data entry if we could, so we can absolutely. Time here. Yes. Thank you. So this is our, our portal. This is our main screen where all of the prior authorizations run from. We have these three tabs in the middle that will track all the prior authorizations. Uh, it shows you what needs to be done, like a to-do list. It'll have listed in this middle sent to plan button, any prior authorization that's waiting for a determination. And then, and it can be archived, prior authorizations can be archived and sent into the virtual filing cabinet, which is our search tab. Now for when the provider's offices do start the initial prior authorizations, it's a simple one click. They go to new request and they type in their medication. This is a dynamic field. So the more letters that they type in for the medication, the more options will pop up for them. Nice and simple, they scroll down to choose and select what medication and strength is needed. The page takes them right to the patient details section. It also has an address book, which would help to fill in the demographics, save time, do a little bit of streamlining. We're gonna skip that for today. I am gonna obviously showcase what we're here for today. So this next section is how they would choose the correct insurance form to start the request. And in this patient insurance section, they can actually search by the name of the insurance plan specifically, or they can search with the identifiers on the drug insurance card, specifically the BIN, PCN, and RX group number. So let me show you how this works. We're going to open this up and we're going to type in Aloha. We're going to spell it correctly because that always helps. Aloha Care. Let's see if I can just do Aloha. Nope. So it wants the whole thing. Typing in the full name, it pulls up the forms that are available and it will describe the title with what it is. We have this more information button to give more details just to confirm that this is the correct form for the member and they would just click start request. The form opens up and it can be filled out from here. After all the demographics are entered in, along with the prescriber information, at the very bottom is a send a plan button. That is going to send it into the, the insurance plan for a real-time check for an active policy. I do have one started here just to kind of show every PA does have a unique identifying key at the very top, and that's how we can pull up the PA. The address book is available for both sides. So we're just gonna type in a patient name. Address book activates from a drop-down list of every patient with that first name. They can select which patient, which member they're working with. Most of the details will fill in. I leave that blank. Same with the prescriber section. They can just type in the first name of the provider and they can select which provider is working with the member. And basically it just takes them step by step. It's very simple. The red require tags are, it's going to be a hard stop that they must fill in. The dosage form is of course very important. It's a drop down alphabetical to so select what dosage form. The diagnosis code is also a dynamic field, so they can start to type in a word or two of the diagnosis, and all the options will pop up to be selected, or if they happen to know the code, the diagnosis code, they can type in the code, and the same thing, all the options will pop up for, for them, and then the send a plan button would do a real-time check. Now, what happens after the real-time check is comes back is the plan will come back with clinical questions. And these clinical questions need to be answered. They pop up here at the very bottom automatically. These clinical questions need to be answered. 
and then it's sent back again to the plan for the determination. Now, these clinical questions, these are smart questions. So every time one question is answered, another one will populate based on the previous answer. So having the patient's chart notes, having the member's chart notes available is definitely going to be advantageous. For example, is the patient currently being treated? If I were to say no, it moves on to the next question. However, if I go back and say yes, a new question populates, well, when? When was this medication started? So basically just fill in an answer going down the, going down the page. Very, very streamlined step-by-step. -step. We have a section at the bottom for document upload. So the providers can attach any chart notes, any documentation that they want to be included in the, in the request for, for the member. And it will be attached and sent as a bundle. They can be uploaded right from the user's computer. Now, there are some EMRs that don't allow chart notes to be attached. In that case, we can actually jump in and help out to make this happen, they would call or chat us. We have our chat feature here in the bottom corner and they would just write in and say, hey, for this key number, which is up here at the top, that's how we identify our prior authorizations. I need, I need to attach 37 pages or whatever it is. They would fax it to us. We can attach it right to this prior authorization and then it can be sent off as a bundle, which is a really nice feature to be able to do. After the prior authorization is fully sent in, again, that it will automatically shift over here to sent to plan. And here is where it will wait for the determination to come back. Now, just because of time, I'm not gonna do all of the steps, but I'm gonna show you when I go here, for example, this third PA down, the status is automatically changed to the outcome. So you can see it says approved. Now, our users also will get an email from us letting them know that the prior authorization has come back with a determination. So they will get an email, but they also have the status updated automatically right on the dashboard. And then from here, they would just click the archive button and it files it away. It keeps the visual clutter to a minimum so that all they are looking at are prior authorizations that they need to work on or that they're waiting for an answer to come back. Andrea, thank you so much for walking through the, the Cover My Meds tool. Uh, we know our providers um, have found that very helpful. Um, we're going to go ahead now and move to uh, Taylor to walk through the Zip Drug program. Perfect. Hi, everyone. I'm Taylor Lazarowitz. Um, I'm going to be talking through the Zip Drug program. Um, similar to how Scott introduced Ingenio, I wanted to let everyone know that um, if you weren't aware, uh, ZipDrug was acquired uh, by Ingenio a little over a year ago, um, and it has been a great partnership ever since. Um, right now, I'm going to go through um, the three-prong system that we work with the health plans on. Um, at its basic core, ZipDrug helps to simplify and personalize the pharmacy experience by connecting members to top quality pharmacies. Now, how do we do this? By working with the health um, plans um, and partnering with them, we are able to look at the um, most in need members, at risk members, um, and we either leave it to the health plan or we can help with the analysis to pull out uh, those members, whether it's members over 65 or members with, you know, two plus maintenance medications or members that are in um, some of the chronic states, uh, we can help, um, you know, provide that analysis uh, to the health plan or have them, you know, assist with it um, so that we uh, know the members that we are able to reach out to um, for the zip drug program. Um, the second prong system is um, that we optimize your uh, existing pharmacy network. And what this means is, um, and goes hand in hand with, you know, our partnership with the pharmacies, because without the pharmacies and the health plan partnership, none of this would be possible. So what we do with the pharmacies is, you know, um, you know, through a lot of the testing and through a lot of uh, the experience with a lot of the members and health plans, we found that the four pillar system is, um, you know, a system that really guarantees, uh, you know, a, uh, S an elevated member experience. So these four pillars are compliance packaging, medication reconciliation, 
um, MedSync and hand delivery. So through those four pillars, we have a team dedicated to, um, to the, uh, you know, uh, pharmacy program. So they reach out to the pharmacies and they work with them on, you know, if they don't have the four pillars, if they're interested, how can we partner with them on that? Um, and then in addition to that, um, they follow up with the pharmacy. So uh, there's a constant relationship flowing where uh, ZipDrug is always, um, you know, communicating with the pharmacies on the latest member trends, the latest member needs, or, you know, any um, barriers that may arise. And then the third prong in the system is the white glove member experience. And we found that, you know, ZipDrug uh, personalizes uh, the pharmacy experience because of uh, one of the proprietary platform tools that we use. And um, thank you for pulling up Betsy. I will let her go in one second. Um, and this tool, oh, one second, one second, yeah. This mm -hmm. tool, um, so how it helps the, the pharmacist is no longer are they, you know, asking questions like, hi, what's your name? What's your number? That, that information's already there. You're allowed to get to the nitty gritty of it. You can say things like, oh, I see you've missed medication for the past two months. Let's work through that. Why are you missing your medication? How can we work toward, you know, making the member more adherent? Or, oh, I see you haven't gotten a flu shot. Would you like a flu shot? Or I see, you know, um, you're taking medication for diabetes. We have a diabetes, you know, educational program. Would you like to be a part of that? They, this system really personalizes the experience for the member so that the member is able to, um, you know, have that, that um, you know, one-on-one -on -one with a pharmacist rather than, um, you know, just uh, talk to a robot about their name and number. Um, and as Bobby just presented, uh, Betsy is one of many members who, uh, you know, really uh, love the program and, and you can hear it from her. So I'll let her speak. I had received a letter from Zip Drug, but I didn't pay attention to it because I didn't see how I could possibly manage to do a mail-in program. The idea of getting the medicines all coordinated to be one day a month, I just knew we aren't together enough. Fortunately for me, whoever followed up with me at your company thought it through my head that it wasn't mail order. I agreed to talk to the pharmacy. And I'm thinking, this can't possibly be a local company. Well, the pharmacist comes on, and indeed it is. They are less than a half a mile from my house. They were willing to work with us to call our original pharmacy and our doctor to arrange to get them all due on the same day. They even contacted Anthem so that we could get short fills for the days that we didn't have enough medicine until we could start it. And the 14th of the month is our day. So they call us on the 10th just to make sure there's no changes in the medicine. And then they put them in pill packs. Well, I can't tell you what those mean to us. These pill packs touched us so much. And my husband was like, oh, my God, they have no idea what these things mean. Kind of the funny note is, though, at night when he opens his pill packs, I look over there thinking he's got some interesting snack going on. <laughs> And indeed it is, and it's the pills. But then I'm reminded of how wonderful they are. So they're just really a wonderful benefit for us. And for that reason, we'll never move from Anthem. And we'll I had received... Sorry about that. Guys. Yeah, Sorry. Betsy's great, but we don't want to hear it again. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to hear it again. Yeah, there we so, go. <laughs> um, simply to wrap up, um, I know that we are running on time. Um, there are proven studies, um, you know, where we do close the gap of adherence and um, a lot more testimonials. So, you know, please reach out to me if you're interested. Um, and I will hand it off to Kit, I believe, is next. Yes. Yep. And this is Lisa. I'm going to start and I'm going to turn it over to Kit. I just want to start with the overview of the specialty pharmacy. So Aloha Care does have a benefit um, that uses IngenioRx specialty pharmacy. Uh, there is a, an on-island location, as well as we do have the ability to use the Long's pharmacies on the island for uh, pickup. So that pharmacy is available to, not the Long's pharmacies, but the, the telephonic customer service is available 24-7. So whether it's 3 a.m. in Hawaii or 3 a.m. in Ohio, and a member wants to pay their bill or to ask a question about their medication, um, it's really a full service 24-7. It's not just a pharmacist on call. 
Um, but essentially, we do have the specialty pharmacy that has experts that are pharmacists and technicians that are really experts in the disease states. They understand the supplies as well as the drugs. We have text messages that we can send to members, letting them know where their medication is in the process and if there's an, an issue with their order. We also have nurses on staff that are there to tailor a, um, an education program for the member based on their disease state. Um, so a, a really robust uh, service option for our members. But for those who choose to go outside in GNURX specialty, I'm gonna turn it over to Kit to talk a little bit about the RAP specialty pharmacy, and then he'll also talk about mail. Thanks, Lisa. Can you guys hear me? I'm, I'm being told that my audio might be not be working. Is it okay? Yes, okay. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you. Thanks, Lisa. So, so in addition to you know, the, the CVS options, the lungs, the lungs options, and our specialty pharmacy options, we did actually we did also contract with uh, about a dozen, about 14 uh, retail pharmacies uh, that give uh, members who have uh, potentially have access issues or or uh, need to, need to be able to you know can't really get to the specialty pharmacy in an efficient way. Uh, we do have additional pharmacies contracted to to provide the the added convenience of uh, to some of these sensitive uh, members to be able to access their drugs as well. So that that really um, it, that really underscores you know how much we we uh, we value the the access to for our members and and make sure that. And we provide that high quality service to members. And so, uh, Bobby, if you want to skip over to the, the mail order uh, piece here, um, and I just wanted to to uh, quickly wrap with the with a, just a quick overview of our home delivery. So we've talked a little bit about about some of the the ways we offer the convenience uh, of for members to be able to access their drugs. And so, certainly, we have a robust network, a retail network that enables that. We've got the specialty network, as well as what uh, Taylor went over with with the Zip Drug program, and then there's also uh, the home delivery pharmacy as well. So on this slide here, you can see we've got um, kind of split into two uh, two sections here. We've got the light blue section on the right, which is uh, what the the uh, the capabilities available to to you as a prescriber, and then on the left, we've got the uh, it oversee it, it uh, talks about the member driven uh, components of of home delivery. And on the right, I'll start on the right and I'll go clockwise. So, um, so excuse me, the, the prescribers have, you still have an opportunity to use, uh, to phone in the prescriptions um, as, 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 you, as you're accustomed to. Uh, you have the e-prescribe option as well, uh, where you can prescribe directly to the home delivery pharmacy, as well as using fax. For the, for the member driven, I'm gonna start at the top there and go counterclockwise now. Um, at, the, at the top there, the members have the ability to use our digital portals uh, to, to uh, uh, request refills and, and uh, get support for, for, from a home delivery perspective. And if they choose not to use a digital portal, we do have our, our call centers that can help the member. Um, I'm going to the uh, going one one section to the left there, and then um, for those those members who are used to who are accustomed to use to uh, filling through the home delivery pharmacy, uh, they can use um, our IVR system as well, where they they don't need to talk to a live agent. They can uh, go through the the different prompts and then actually order their refills accordingly. Uh, there's the traditional way of uh, mailing in the order form if that's if that's something the the member chooses to do. And then finally, uh, we do have the ability to do auto refill so that, that we can make sure that the members are, are kept on track with their, their, their um, um, drug regimen and treatment. So with that, um, uh, I will pass back over to you, Bobby, and we'll, I think we're going to head into, uh, head into the Q&A section here. Thanks, Kit. That's correct. So I believe we have, we're going to start off with the Q&A. There was a question about the pillars and uh, Taylor. Can you pick that yes, one? Absolutely. So I just answered in the chat, but I'm happy to speak aloud as well. Um, so my apologies that that part was a bit rushed, but the four pillars are compliance, packaging, medication, reconciliation, med sync, and hand delivery. Let's see. Uh, Han, like there's another just... question from, I, yeah, it looks like there's another question from Eileen about uh, will provider be given the names of the on island local pharmacies able to dispense specialty? And I think this is a fair question because YNI Comprehensive Coast uh, and all the CHD pharmacies can uh, dispense uh, specialty pharmacy. So Kit, is there a way we could update the uh, network file to do this? 
we can look into it, Hans, um, or we can also provide that that separate listing. Uh, but either way, we can we can uh, work with you to to get that information out to the um, out, out to the group here. Um, I, I think also once we have uh, the zip drive network, we should post that on our um, provider search tool too. And just so that everyone knows, uh, zip drug is free of charge to our members and providers. So it's an added uh, benefit that we think is uh, will help reduce some of the uh, medication ad adherence and disparity that we see, especially for those that um, have asthma, COPD, and those that need multiple medication. You know, we'll share this presentation, Han. And uh, just calling out in the back, there's an appendix. And uh, to, to be helpful, we wanted to pull in um, some resource information, telephone number, uh, links. And then we also have a little bit more information as it relates to Zip Drug. And Taylor, sorry about that. We made you run a little bit quickly on that one. But uh, okay. we're happy to share you know, this information. Han kind of covered it already. So <laughs> I, she did a great job. Yes. She, she, she's my salesperson. I love it. <laughs> if there's no questions, I'm happy to speak to this. So this is a case study that um, just came out of 2021. And we're really happy to show that um, in the blue, you can see, um, you know, pre-zip drug. And in the orange, you can see after they... Um, they um, go into the zip drug program and, and use the tool. And we have seen an up to 10% adherence with the three disease states, diabetes, hypertension, and cholesterol. So this is one of the studies that has been done. Um, if you're interested in any additional ones, I'm happy to provide. Um, but to um, Han kind of covered this to Han's point, um, mm -hmm. you know, why zip drug was of interest was because it is helping to move the needle on adherence. I'm sorry, Dr. Okamoto, um, did you have a question? Oh, no, I just wanted to, uh, no, when you're done, I just want to make a comment. Absolutely. I'm done. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. No, I mean, this has been, I, I hope this has been very helpful to all the uh, clinical folks in the community health centers who are who attended this for the past uh, 55 minutes. And I'd like to suggest to um, you and uh, to Han that we consider doing something like this in another um, maybe four months. Three to three to six months. Dr. Hakamata, we're, we're would... very happy to, to participate. Great. Thanks, Bobby. Yeah, I, I think that would be great, especially when we have uh, Medicare transitioning yeah, exactly. um, on with Ingenio too. The other thing I, I wanted to uh, bring up was that uh, the date of when Zip Drug is going to begin. So, uh, Taylor, um, is that November 29th? Yes. So yeah, zip drug will begin on November 29th. Something to keep in mind is that zip drugs, we're not promoting uh, chain pharmacy. The, the program promotes local pharmacies and your local community pharmacies, which I think are the pillars for some of the Hawaii, you know, local business. We want to support that. And I think that this program does a lot for our members and the community. So um, I know that some of the CHCs pharmacies are participating in this. And um, I know that like uh, five minute pharmacies were offering in Y and I too, when I talked to Ali about this, was that um, the program that some of the, the things that they're doing, they were doing it through COVID time free of charge. So right now with the, pro the zip drug um, that they're able to get reimbursement for it. And um, yeah, this program is still available for to sign up if you're interested. And uh, um, so if you can, just send me an email and I'll put in the chat my email address and uh, just send me an email and I can refer you to, um, the, to the appropriate person. Thank you, Han. I'm telling you, you, you do zip drugs so well. <laughs> <laughs> Just from the Ingenio side, I wanted to say thank you for the opportunity um, to spend some time with you this afternoon and share some of our, uh, our insights, our expertise. And uh, we very much appreciate the opportunity to partner with um, 
the Aloha Care team and all the providers. Thank you. Thanks, Scott. Okay. And then uh, for those that uh, may not see my email, Chelsea will follow up with an email. So if you have any questions regarding this um, webinar or any of the programs listed, um, we can follow up with any of your questions. Okay. Um, with that, are there any other questions? Okay. If not, well, thank you everyone for your time and um, just to be on the call and meet our partners in Genio. We hope that the new partnership with Aloha Care and Genio and you will uh, help us grow as a plan. So thank you, everyone. Great. Bye. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you very thank much. You. Have a nice week. Have a good afternoon. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye. Thank you.